Hey everyone, this is Scott, Great Scott on Muscle Forums, I'm on, and uh, just want to make a quick video on the electrical modifications I made on this Diecast Masters 116 scale low boy. Um, this trailer is designed to go with the Diecast Masters truck, and it has two electronic functions that it does. Uh, first one is the gooseneck moves up and down, and the second one, all the way back here, is with the lights. It has three sets of lights uh, turning and then the uh, center set of lights there. Um, I am not using this with the 16 scale tractor. I'm using it with my Tamiya semis, which it is a, uh, for the most part, a direct fit to go with. Now, um, these functions are designed to plug in to the 16 scale tractor using these two plugs right here. The white plug is for the lights and the black plug is for the gooseneck. And as you can see, they are no longer plugged in. The other functions on the trailer is that the gooseneck itself removes and it's got four conductors going back to the lights and the ramps also fold down. But neither one is electronic. And uh, just a quick note on that gooseneck, um, to attach it um, takes quite a bit of force. This guy right here is normally out 90 degrees. You have to push it down and then you have to turn it. Pushing it down takes a lot more force than what you would uh, figure. But that is not electronic and it also comes with a set of uh, small landing gear, which is actually those guys, which you see is no longer on the trailer right here to give you a uh, kind of functionality of moving around without the uh, without the rest of the trailer. Now the gooseneck attach and this landing gear are not, don't have any electronic functionality to them. You could make it, I, just, I suppose, but for what I want, um, not really necessary. So as designed, the LEDs back here are on a probably three and a half to four millimeter printed circuit board that goes all the way across. Like I said, there's three sets of lights. I'm sorry, three sets of wires, four sets. I'll get it right. Four sets of wires that come up here and go into that four conductor, 3.5 millimeter cable. And then you've got the same standard uh, 3.5 millimeter four conductor black cable that uh, both are supposed to plug into the diecast master's truck. Of course, this isn't one. Now, the black controls the gooseneck tilt, the white controls the LEDs. So what I've done is I've made these remote. Um, with all of my trailers that go with my Tamiya trucks, I have them so that they're on their separate uh, LiPo pack and they all operate off of one of these little key fobs, which gives me uh, generally f flexibility because I can program them onto the radio I'm using, but with multiple trucks, um, it makes it kind of weird. So this, the key fob simply moves with the trailer and uh, makes it so the whole mess is pretty much hands off. So for this guy, I've got lights on and off, and then, for the truck, once I back it up and hitch it on, then all I have to do it takes a moment, but it comes up. Okay. And then you hear it starting to stress out and then the clutch kicks in. The nice thing about this too is when it gets lowered back down, the trailer itself acts as a landing gear, and if I had the uh, truck actually energized, I could uncouple and pull the truck away, um, which is the exact functionality that I want. So, looking at the connections that you have on here, again, this is the lights, and looking at it, this way, if I can get it to focus, come on, focus, 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 
Okay. Mm. But we're, we're, there we go. So the bottom pin is where your positive lead goes. And then the top three are the negative leads and uh, remote through the uh, diecast master's truck that makes continuity and uh, either turns on the lights or flashes them for blinkers and whatnot. The, this guy, the top pin and the third pin down go to the motor. The second and the fourth don't do anything. And it's just a DC motor, so by reversing the polarity, you get either up or down on the gooseneck. So, as you can see, this part is not stock. Um, printed this out, and it's just held on with magnets. Um, got a steel piece there, and then underneath here on the bottom side, on either side of that hole, I've got two magnets glued in, and this is what it looks like. Uh, that's some ugliness from the uh, supports, but when it's on, you really can't see it. So what I have going on in here, um, this is the battery pack I use on all my trailers. It lasts a long, long, long time. And uh, that's simply plugged in to a winch controller, which is here. And then I've got a DC to DC converter, which drops the voltage down. Now, I'm fairly certain without uh, really checking that the electrical system on the diecast masters is three volts which means the LEDs in the back are three volts. And you try to, I know you can get up to 3.5, but I'm betting if you push them anywhere past that, you're gonna blow the lights. Um, which to be honest, wouldn't be that big of a deal because it should be fairly easy to put replacement LEDs in. So what I've got going on here is this is a Hey OK winch controller and light controller, generally for RC crawlers. And uh, that goes two places. Uh, the leads for the winch controller, which are these black guys, feed the motor for the gooseneck. Um, one of the lighting controllers feeds this DC to DC set at three volts, which feeds the lights. Um, and then I just have everything wired in with these mini deans. And this right here is for the motor, it's green and red and then for the lights the red is the high and then the other four colors are the low and all you have to do is just pin them out to uh to figure out who's who in that so in that regard it's very very easy to do and so i bought this guy it was uh 250 bucks on amazon and as a one sixteenth scale, it's uh, really does not, let me get back here, it doesn't look terrible. I mean, it actually looks really good with the Tamiya trucks. It looks proper. The only time you can really, really see that you're uh, got a little something weird going on is you look at it from the back and you just really have to look at it to say, hey, you know, it is a little bit narrow. I would say it's probably five to 10 millimeter um, narrower than the, uh, to be a trucks without actually putting calipers on them. But other than that, it's fairly proper. So, um, and I wouldn't consider this a reasonable compare to the RC four wheel drive trailer, um, simply because they are in different categories. Um, kind of ironic, die cast masters and it's all plastic, which I get, I know where the name comes from. They do on 150th scale. Uh, die cast toys so I get it but uh, the uh, RC four wheel drive trailer is all aluminum it is top shelf top shelf uh, quality but it also comes with top shelf price um, I looked a couple of days ago and the trailer itself was eleven hundred and fifty dollars on sale for something like eight hundred and fifty so I mean I I've seen one once in person and completely drooled over it and uh yeah it, it's to me it's worth the price but for a lot of us um even 250 dollars is is a huge chunk of our rc budget and that trailer is 600 dollars more than this one 
for what I want to do and for, you know, just tooling around the, uh, the front yard here, um, this one is perfectly fine. And because the electronics are just really, really easy, it's easy to modify. Now, one of the things that I did struggle with was whether to go with this right here, which is the DC to DC, which drops the LiPo voltage down to three volts uh, once the uh, controller sends voltage to it. As I said, these guys back here, I'm fairly certain are three volts and won't tolerate um, LiPo voltage, or at least 2S like I'm running. Um, but if that's something you wanna do, this comes apart really easy in the back. Everything just drops down. Recommend removing the wheel assembly and then it's just a couple of bolts back here and all drops down. All of the lights are actually on a three and a half to four millimeter PCB board, like I said. And um, what I had thought about doing is just drilling out where the LEDs are on that PC board and putting in a um, like three millimeter LEDs uh, from Common Sense RC. Um, that's the LEDs that I use. They come with their load resistors already wired up and they've got a huge voltage range. I think five to 12, five to 14, somewhere in there, but more than enough range for, for what I'm doing with my trailers. Um, haven't taken it to that step yet. And if I ever did, um, I said there's four conductors running all the way back on this thing. Uh, all I'd do is take one for the high, or I'm sorry, take two for the high, two for the return, and then take them directly back. Uh, it might be a project for, for another time. Um, I do want to call out um, Hey OK Performance Products. Um, Al up there in British Columbia makes these, and this is a top shelf product. Um, the worst thing about them is the way that they look. He uh, dips them in liquid electrical tape to waterproof them. But Al builds all these himself. He tests them himself. And uh, I've, I've never, ever had a problem. And uh, you can also get them to do some uh, custom work for you. And he, of course, is going to charge a little extra. But like that trailer there has one of his custom controllers that uh, does a few different functions for me. But these things are just reliable. Uh, you can probably get something like it off Amazon for, you know, maybe 20, 30 bucks less. But, you know, you might go through three or four of them before you get one that works or ones that actually last. Um, Al's products, they just last. Um, they're top shelf. This one cost me 80 bucks plus shipping. But I'm never going to have to worry about it. The only thing I'll have to do is change out the batteries in the controller. And uh, I've got no doubts to keep humming along. And if it does fail, Al backs up his products. Um, he's very good that way. Um, so I'm going to leave a link to his page in the uh, description if you want to check him out. So this is just a, uh, I said, not necessarily a review. I really haven't gotten this guy um, on, the, on the road yet, uh, as I'd say. But uh, I've seen other people that have this thing. I've seen people put up 16 pounds on this thing, and it does flex, but it handles it just fine. I probably will not put 16 pounds on it. So if you have any questions, any uh, comments, uh, please post them up. And uh, like I said, this is not uh, really what I consider comparable to the RC four-wheel drive, but you know what? For people like me, it's a very good substitution. Thanks for watching. Bye.